Well, hello again. This is Rubber Band, and today I have a video that's going to be covering my secondary uh, tubular origination machine. This is the uh, much vaunted and legendary A1 Hurdy Gurdy. This is kind of, for the longest time, was considered the must have machine as far as tubular origination. Uh, they used to make one with a very fancy wooden case, and uh, a lot of locksmithing tools had a, a very interesting fancy case that things tended to come in just uh, as, as a way of making them look like the very expensive tool that they were. So um, now, what's in the box? All right, so it's a quick breakdown. I'll use this as a pointer. We have our Adjustment Allen tools. This is a spare cutter. It's never been used. This is a tubular key decoder. This is the first generation. The secondary generation is blue, like this. Then we have uh, this piece of rubber, which is used as kind of a hand shield to uh, prevent your hand from digging into the key. You'll see that later. This is for offset keys and uh, other pin orientations for um, different styles of tubular key. So now let's get on to the main machine here. Okay, so what this machine consists of, very simply, is a body and a hand crank. Um, this machine is so named after the hurdy-gurdy instrument, which is uh, a very small, uh, kind of looking like a violin instrument, but it has a hand crank. Um, which uh, creates a droning sound. It's very often in uh, uh, like pirate themed music and the like. It's a it's a very festive inter uh, and interesting instrument. Um, that's just a little uh, sequitur for you. But so we have our body here. This is what's going to hold our key blank. I have a key blank right here. So I want to originate a key. So I um, I originate clockwise as most of these are. So Right here is where it would go. And then we have our dial. This is set to a depth of right now two. So this is an arrow, this little pointed piece right here. And it points towards the value, which are orientated around this knurled piece of steel here. So what we're gonna do is back this screw out because our first step that we're gonna be cutting is a seven. I'm going to dial this all the way to 7, which is right here. Ooh, bad lighting. Big apologies there. Um, one second. Let me see if I can't fix the lighting problem. That might help. Who knows? We'll see in a second. Eh, okay, a little bit. So, all right. Now that we have this dialed and adjusted to 7, we're able to get our piece of rubber here. I'm going to place this over the bow of the key, center it, okay? So now we're ready to kind of originate. So we're going to kind of pinch these ridges here, and we're going to take this, place it in here, and then we're just going to push in and grind it. I don't use this part really. I just kind of grab right here. You can hear that nice clicking. So it's uh, it's done already is nice and then we just remove this it kind of gets bound up a little bit so all right so we have a depth of seven cut right here you see that surface so we'll take our key gauge i'm going to use the this generation so seven so seven these correspond to the, the pin values. So I'm cutting an FEO K1. If anybody has looked into the FEO K1, this is not the bidding that is actually uh, recorded with specifications, but because those depths are off by one, I have to cut them off by one because of how these machines originate keys. So um, in case anybody researches that, that's why these are off by one. So. We're gonna turn it again and get ready to cut 
the next depth. So uh, over, over, oh, sorry, got off frame there. I was trying to get my eyes closer to it. So now we're gonna adjust this one. So the next depth is two. So we're gonna back around. I like to just turn this and then we're gonna clamp the screw back down. And these have uh, little divots in them that correspond to where the, uh, the, the value is supposed to be. And once it sinks really in there, you know you're in the right spot. So there's the arrow and the, the two. Again, apologies for the bad lighting. I still haven't figured out how to get good lighting, so. All right. And we're done. Okay, and now we're gonna turn this one value, drop it in. Okay, next bidding is five. And we're gonna just turn till we get to five. I kinda do a little wiggle to make sure that this screw is deeply centered into that divot. So I don't have the machine yet, but there is a affordable version of a tubular originator that is sold in China surplus houses. And I'm, I've been meaning to test that alongside these ones just to make sure that um, it actually does a good job. And I'm sure for the hobbyist, it does do a good job. All right, next bidding is the four. However, though Luxport is my hobby, I'm a locksmith by trade. So I need something a little more robust. And with these machines, this one and the TKM90, I have more robust, reliable machines. Unfortunately, you cannot get this machine anymore outside of the used market A1 security, a long-standing uh, name in the locksmithing trade. Uh, they folded, so they are no longer in business, which is unfortunate because they had a lot of very original and also um, kind of, uh, what, what, what is the word I'm looking for? Kind of monolithic uh, pieces of equipment like this one. This one is a legendary piece of equipment. I'm very lucky to have one. I am kind of uh, known in the circuit as a locksmith historian. Like I really like the old stuff and I do my best to kind of preserve the knowledge and equipment the best that I can. So this is just another step in that passion. All right, so the next is a six. So we'll pinch and grind in. So one thing I do like about this one over the TKM90, the HPC variant of this machine, is just how aggressively this cuts, but also this has been uh, used very little and I use the other one all the time. So the next one is a three. We'll back our screw out. We'll dial it all the way down to three. All right, three. All right, last one is a two. We're gonna get a little bit off, right? And then rotate. All right, very good, very nice. Okay. So that's it for originating a tubular key with the hurdy gurdy. There's uh, that's fairly uneventful for such an interesting machine. For example, this was the decoder it tended to come with, which is this flat steel key that was cut. So this way you could actually keep a decoder on you on your key ring. And I mean, look at this. There's an eight depth and a seven. I mean, it, it, uh, it accommodates gem depths. So I actually have two decoders in this, uh, or uh, maybe that's maybe that's Ace. Yeah, no, the Chicago, yeah, Ace. Okay, so I cut to Fort Depths, um, which is what the FEOK one is on. Oopsie. So this is a completed FEOK one. So um, I don't really deburr them all that heavily. I actually have a steel brush that I was using earlier. And I just brush the, the barrel to get the burrs off and get it nice and smooth. This is actually for a customer. So 
um, you'll, you're, you're seeing your key be made right now, customer of mine whose name I won't mention, because um, I, don't, I don't think that's the proper thing to do. But anyway, here's here's a key being made. Um, so I uh, I now sell the FEO K1, and so I've had costs to use these a lot more. And um, the next step that I like to do with these is uh, because I cut the FEO K K1 so much. And um, the first F is a 7. I like to just dial this down to a 7. So um, get all of my metal out of there. Oh, look at that. I kind of messed up my, my shaft there, but that's okay. I have another one. All right. So that's it for the hurdy-gurdy. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about it, um, go ahead and put them below. And uh, let's get this guy back in frame. And uh, once again, I've been Rubberman. Thanks for watching.